Here at Tim Hortons, ready to go. We're all deckled up. Yes, we got Four Corners Expedition decals done up. Uh, we got Rick from uh, Big Blue Overland. Uh, of course, myself from Overland, Alberta, and Dave from Blind Man Overland. It's gonna be an awesome trip, and uh, I'm looking forward to sharing all the experiences with you guys. Deckles look amazing. Thanks, Dave, for getting those done up. Everyone's packed. Dave still has to buy groceries though, apparently. Or he'll just probably eat our food. We'll figure that out as we go. But even And so with a couple of pictures, we were off and ready to take off on our journey. All right, finally on the road. Got the decals on. Super stoked. This is gonna be an awesome journey. And uh, it's gonna be a lot of adventure. I'm totally in on that. We had a couple of goals for the Four Corners Expedition. Number one, we wanted to hit all four corners using as many back roads as physically possible. Myself personally, I had a personal goal to show that you didn't have to have a, um, a rig that's all kitted out in order to do this. I had a Jeep, I had a sleeping bag, and I had all my camping gear. And you know what? It was, it was simple, and it worked. Could not have asked for a better day to start this. Beautiful out there. Beautiful. Setting out on this adventure, we had no idea what to expect. We had two weeks in order to get the four corners done. We wanted to do as many back roads as possible in order to make it happen. But we had to get back to work. We had a life that was waiting for us. Could we get it done in the, ne in the next two weeks? We didn't know, but you know what? We were gonna try. Other than uh, a quick stop to uh, check our tire pressures, next stop for us was gonna be Drumheller. Brief stop in Drumheller on our way down to the uh, the southeastern part of the province. Gotta love Drumheller, beautiful spot. What a beautiful day today, man. Absolutely stunning. Looking forward to sharing more of it. And uh, I think we're gonna take a quick trip to the Hoodoos and then it's all the way down close to the border. Take it easy. It was a short drive to the Hoodoos, not very far at all, but we did make a stop in Drumheller, so I guess uh, Dave could pick up his groceries. We were a little relieved. The Hoodoos, probably one of the most iconic landscapes that uh, Alberta has. They were formed a long time ago. Some people say 70 to 75 million years ago, and they were formed and created by the flow of water through the area as well as wind, snow and other elements. Um, the Hoodoos are definitely one of Alberta's treasures 
and uh, it was uh, amazing to walk through them. It's good to see that they're protecting the hoodoos, but you know, what, what an amazing landscape and trails everywhere. So if you did happen to bring your hiking boots, you could go for hours and hours and hours on trails in these hills. After visiting this purely magical place, it was time to get back on the road. We had a schedule to keep and we still hadn't even hit our first corner of Alberta yet. So off we went. about this time we kind of had enough of uh, pavement decided we'd turn on to some gravel roads and see where they took us it's Alberta after all they do kind of eventually meet up somewhere um, so yeah we saw this bridge and we took it The great thing about taking back roads is you get to see terrain you, you would never normally see. And that's amazing. But it really doesn't help your timeline because you're taking the back roads and it takes a little extra time sometimes to get to where you're going. But you know what, in the end it was totally worth it. It was while traveling on the back roads that we saw these magnificent creatures in the distance. And as we got closer, they got bigger. And you know what? I did not realize how large these buffalo actually became. I've always seen them on TV, never up close and personal. 
And, you know, these things stood as tall as my Jeep did. I was absolutely flabbergasted. And again, if we were not actually traveling this on back roads, we never would have seen this. Our next stop was Red Rock Coulee. We were hoping to maybe uh, camp at this particular spot. Uh, we definitely were not going to make it to the, to the first corner that particular day. At Red Rock Coulee and what an amazing spot. There are these huge massive red rocks all over the landscape. Incredibly beautiful. Um, yeah, who knew this even existed? This is amazing. Check it out guys. When we first drove up to Red Rock Coulee, it didn't seem like it was, you know, like all that big. Uh, you see a few red rocks, but as we kind of got into it and saw how the rolling landscape started revealing more coulees and areas where there were more of these red rocks, it became a real magical place. The I've never seen anything like this before. It was um, something that, that was unique and again, you know, on a back road. I think Dave said it the best, as you can see the mountains way back in the in the background and you're surrounded by this kind of eerie landscape. It, it seemed like something right out of Lord of the Rings and uh, it, it definitely was, uh, was an experience going to Red Rock Coulee. So we were hoping to camp here, but it doesn't look like there's any camping at Red Rock Coulee. So it looks like we are going to be heading off to Cypress Hills. You can see them in the background over there, so I guess we're, that's where we're heading. On the map there looked like there was a really great campsite at Eagle Butte um, up a range road. So we're going to go check it out. Alright, so went to Red Rock Coulee. Red Rock Coulee, no place to camp. Um, Eagle Butte, no place to camp. It looks like uh, we were going to go hit the range road and there was a campsite, but uh, Provincial Park boundary, it looks like they extended the boundary. So no vehicles passed there. Um, so what we did, this is a uh, government land here. We're gonna camp the night here, uh, cook dinner. It's getting getting a little late. So what we wanna do is, is hike up in these hills up here, which uh, will be pretty awesome. But uh, epic day, man. What an epic day. Uh, beautiful buffalo, awesome historical, geographical, uh, um, like, oh, just awesome. The, the Red Rock Coulee, oh man, I didn't wanna leave. It was so amazing. So, sunset tonight is going to be awesome, and I'm going to get working on dinner. Going to have some steak and salad. And some Pizza. beer! And some beer. No, actually, no. Captain Morgan's. Captain Morgan's rum, baby. Leg up. <laughs> have a good night, guys. <laughs> Stay tuned for new episodes of the Four Corners Expedition as we hit each four corners of Alberta. A lot of cool stuff to see. Alberta is so diverse and I really appreciate you guys joining us on this adventure.
crazy. Worth it. Alright, gonna start with coffee and I'm gonna share with you guys uh, my uh, kind of a keto porridge that I make every morning. It's um, it's kind of unique, but uh, it's amazing and I love it. It's full of flavor and I like it way better than normal porridge, so I'll share that with you. Oh, God. <laughs> Sounds like one. <laughs> Alright, here's my porridge recipe. Two tablespoons of almond flour. Two tablespoons of heart hemp. Two tablespoons of chia seeds. And one tablespoon of flax. Alright guys, so here we are. <laughs> and uh, making videos and stuff. Alright, once everything's put together, it's all in the bowl like so. Just put some hot water in until you get the right consistency and just kind of let it uh, let it stew for about a minute or so so everything kind of soaks in you might have to add a little bit more hot water all right so as you can see it does soak up the water quite a bit so if you put a bit too much in just let it sit a little bit hey, hey Rick thanks for stirring up Everyone's my porridge just messing with your videos. <laughs> so put a little bit of cream I like using whipping cream 35% and then last but not least a big handful of blueberries and mix them in i love my blueberries don't you love your blueberries rick yes i do absolutely awesome porridge super filling healthy well with uh coffee and breakfast out of the way we had to get down to the uh, first corner of the province so the next leg of the journey was basically from where we were at eagle butte all the way down to the wild horse crossing Quick stop in Elkwater, had to get some more ice uh, and uh, just resupply a couple of things that we had forgotten to pack along the way. And it looks like we are just about ready to hit the trail again. So we're going to go down to the first corner because we didn't make it last night. Uh, the campsites didn't quite work out and took a lot longer getting to where we needed to go. So uh, we're going to start today with the, uh, the bottom southeast corner and work our way from there. The adventure continues, man. Yesterday was such an amazing first day. What experiences we had, it was awesome. I cannot believe how beautiful Alberta is. So we're, Elkwater is in uh, the Cypress Hills. And Cypress Hills, what a beautiful spot. In the middle of nowhere, all of a sudden you have this mountain and lake uh, views and just, oh, so gorgeous. Anyways, the adventure continues. Thanks, guys. Oh, so good. You knew that, man. That's a Hammond Swiss Panini from, what's this place called? 
I think it's the Elk Water Store. The Elk Water Store, man. Come here, buy stuff, support local. Do it. Have you ever had those moments in life that just stop? Everything just comes to a stop. The air doesn't move. Everything just stops. Well, that happened. Hey everyone. So, on the trip and just received a phone call. Good buddies just passed away. So, not good news. And, uh, yeah, sucks. But we're gonna see this trip through. Um, John, I love you, man. Doing this in honor for you, too. It's times like this that really make you question things and appreciate things at the same time. The people that you love, the people that are around you, the friends you're with. The family was going to hold off on doing the memorial service till I got back from the Four Corners expedition. So we were going to carry forward and we were going to finish this trip. So we were going to push forward to the first point. As we approached the uh, U.S. Customs and, and uh, Border Point at Wild Horse, we had to take a left-hand turn on the Range Road 23A, which is basically on almost exactly right where the Border Point is. Then we would uh, push forward to the most uh, southeastern part of the province that we can get to on roads. All right, southeast corner, check it out. States down there, across this uh, fence here, you're in Saskatchewan. We made it. Southeast corner, awesome. All right, now that we're here, long haul north along that road, right over there. So we're going to do a ton of gravel, hundreds of kilometers. Yeah, I marked it on my GPS, man, we're right on that friggin' corner. We're not getting any more ourselves than now unless you get on that property. One thing we learned real fast, a lot of these roads were not on the maps, any maps. Um, they were summer use only roads and where they led us, well, we just had to take them and figure it out. Eventually, we finally make our way back up to Cypress Hills. Cypress Hills, man, what a beautiful area. You know, this is something that absolutely blew me away. I was not expecting the visual beauty that Cypress Hills actually contains. Man, if you have a chance to go, I highly recommend it. It'll be worth your time. So we're here on the Cypress Hills Plateau and uh, Awesome history. I, I was wondering why this this existed in the middle of the prairies. Just mountains and lakes and, and just beautiful, beautiful forest everywhere. Well, it's I guess during the Ice Age. 
and you can see in the, in the, in the distance there it's all just a flat plateau I guess the ice came here and this was literally just an island in the ice and that's what they're saying and it, it, that's what created this particular um, beautiful area and man is it beautiful it's um, breathtaking breathtaking but you can see for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles that would have been nothing but ice when the, uh, during the ice age absolutely incredible really happy I'm exploring this province Now that we were done in beautiful Cypress Hills, we made our way up north. We did a lot of back roads, so it's kind of hard to trace the road, but we ended up uh, going um, to a piece of Crown Land that we had found that was near the Badlands. Uh, beautiful camping spot. We were going to meet Derek and uh, Jeremy there. They were going to join us for the next leg of the, the trip where we were heading up to uh, the sand roads. And man, what a beautiful camp spot. Did I mention that Jeremy from Ad Exploration 4R, here's his Instagram handle, was going to join us? Also, his buddy Derek, who just bought a uh, Toyota 4Runner right off the showroom, what's the first thing he did? 280 kilometers, he decided to take it on an expedition. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, at least this vehicle is going to be used for what it was made for. Pretty awesome, Derek. Thanks for coming along. We definitely had a good night of camping that night. Good food, good friends. And uh, you know, that's what it's all about. Getting out there, experiencing out the outdoors, nature to its finest. And you know what? Having a couple friends along, that's pretty cool too. It was a great night. Make sure to tune in to next week's episode. We have lots more fun coming up and one of the most beautiful sunsets I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Anyways, keep tuned.
What a beautiful morning. We were so blessed with the weather that we had on this trip. We had a lot of sunny days and man, I'm grateful for it. So the original convoy of three ended up turning into a convoy of five. The plan was to make our way up to Fork Lake. Uh, what a beautiful lake, but you know, we had to uh, enjoy this uh, beautiful campsite that we had, have some breakfast and then kind of pack up. We didn't want to leave. It was, it was a beautiful spot. Eventually we did hit the road and true to fashion we had to take a lot of back roads and I tell you back roads are awesome. I absolutely love what you normally don't see on an everyday trip. You see it on the back roads. It's pretty cool. Back roads all the way. Gotta love it baby. Jeremy Lemoyne ended up joining us. Uh, brought up a buddy who just bought himself a brand new 4Runner as well and uh, yeah heading up gonna pick our next camp spot and what a lineup eh Jeremy's got a really sweet setup I, I like his setup um, and uh, yeah Dave's just about to come over the hill here yeah, this is Jeremy's 4Runner uh, right here Really nice uh, off-grid tra uh, off trailer, nicely set up, and road trip with a brand new vehicle. How many kilometers? 288. 288 kilometers on a road trip. Stetler for quick resupply. Had to buy a, um, a portable hard drive because I'm taking way too much footage. So that's uh, gonna help because I don't want to get rid of any footage, man. I got some pretty sweet footage. But heading up north now, and uh, as soon as we kind of figure out our campsite, we'll be kind of marking campsites from there forward um, and uh, a little bit more regimented. Now that we kind of know what to kind of budget for time, doing back roads totally messes up your time. So what you think you're gonna do is totally different what you actually do. So yeah, we're learning. This is our this is our first rodeo. So we're gonna have fun and we're gonna learn from this experience. Well, from Stetler, we're going to have to make our way all the way up to Fork Lake on back roads. And uh, it was actually really unique seeing a lot of the country via back road. Absolutely um, awesome. Man, there's a ton of farms out there with beauty beyond what you would ever think. And uh, it was definitely a privilege to experience all these back roads and all the different treasures that were hidden within them. managed to get up close and personal with Alberta's wild horses. The 
eventually we make our way to Fork Lake. There are a lot of lakes up there that we could have chose from, but we're really happy we chose Fork Lake. Man, were we in for a super treat. The sunset was going to be, without a doubt, one of the, the most beautiful sunsets I have ever seen in my life. Um, yeah, we were in for a real treat. Once we figured out where we were going to camp, we kind of figured out our parking spots and started to unpack. It was going to be an awesome campsite with a beautiful view of the lake. Alright, so tomorrow we're going to start heading up north again. And uh, there's a rumor that there's sand roads. So that might be, depending on what time we get in, what we're doing for tomorrow. So that might be pretty fun. Um, man, couldn't ask for a better location than this. It's going to be a great sleep. After being on the road for a few days, man, the lake was looking pretty good and Dave had to go try it out. It's a good thing we brought some off as well. A couple mosquitoes out. As the night continued on, the sun started to set and the sky looked like it was starting to light on fire. It was vibrant. It was, man, it is, was like nothing I had ever seen before. It, it literally looked like the sky was on fire. It was absolutely amazing. Be sure to tune into the next episode where we get a little bit dirty on the sand roads. It's going to be a lot of fun.
what I can only describe as being the most epic sunset I had ever seen. We settled in for the night and we could see storms starting to roll in on the horizon and man what a light show. I didn't manage to get any footage but absolutely amazing and then it started to rain. Wow did it ever rain. Holy smokes. Such a beautiful sunset, such a beautiful day. Thunderstorms started rolling in, started raining pretty decent. Not raining as, as much right now, but but uh, it was raining really heavy throughout the night. So it'll be interesting to see what we wake up to in the morning. Dig easy. Morning. Rain was pretty intense at times last night. Lots of thunderstorms rolling through tons of lightning. It was actually really, really cool. Um, yeah, it was awesome. Kind of flooded the uh, the entry road a little bit over here. But uh, yeah, time for a coffee. Always makes things better. See you, buddy. See you, man. All right, they're taking off for Fort McMurray. We're gonna meet up with them a little bit later and uh, up at Fort Mac and have some more adventure. With uh, coffee fully integrated into my system and a little bit of food to eat, uh, it was time to get going. So the next corner that we're going to hit is not the true northern corner. In order to get there, you've got to go into the Northwest Territories. And the Northwest Territories has their borders closed to all essential travel. If you go through, you have to self-isolate for seven days. Plus, the people in those communities do not want visitors right now. Fair enough. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from Fort McMurray North. And um, there's some rumors of some uh, sand roads up north. So that's about as far north as we can get without going all the way around and uh, leaving the province and then coming back into the province. So it makes more sense for right now, considering world conditions, just to go ahead and uh, go to the sand roads. So that's where we're off to today. Fort McMurray, then north to the sand roads. considered one of the most dangerous roads in uh, Canada and uh, um, beautiful areas but apparently there's been a lot of accidents we just actually passed a truck that uh, man it smoked a telephone pole did not look good but I think it's just you know maybe people falling asleep a lot of high speed people so I think you know all the factors put together I think that could be what it is a lot of big trucks um, but uh, yeah, wish as well. We're gonna we're gonna stop in Fort Mac here soon. All right, gassed up in uh, Fort McMurray, heading northward. Uh, we're gonna make our way to the uh, sand roads. 
Uh, gonna meet up with Jeremy first. He's gonna join us and uh, come on up with us. We're probably gonna camp up that way. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun, guys. Once you're past the uh, the bridge to nowhere, the road goes down to gravel. And then, once it hits gravel, it eventually comes to an end, and then the sand road started. All right, made it. I've never seen someone so pumped about fucking Oh man, he's just so jazzed, eh? He's just giving her. Oh, Guys, we're on the sand road ever. and we're having a blast out here. Yeah. Check it out, sand, as far as the eye can see. So we're going to continue to push on, see where we can get to and have some fun in this awesome sand. Anyways, wish you were here, guys. What you doing there, Dave? Oh, I'm airing down my tires, buddy. Oh, cool. Going on the sand roads up north, there's not a lot of help if you get into trouble. So we took a, an extra 20 liters with us just for recovery and, and whatever needs we needed it for. We all had a full tank when we started out. 
So the half tank rule was in place. As soon as the person who hit half tank first happened, that's basically where we turned around to come back and the 20 liters was kept for, like I said before, recovery. So that took us to just south of the Richardson Sand Dunes. So we're about two and a half hours in on the sand road. Man, epic. It is so wicked. Um, really good uh, wheeling. There's a few mud holes you got to do. Uh, but fun, fun, fun. Oh, man. So we stopped here. It's a place called Twin Lakes. We're going to camp overnight here. And oh, my God, it is so beautiful. Now, if you ever have the chance to come down here to Twin Lakes, highly recommend it, man. This is an amazing spot. So it's two lakes, one on each side of the road. And uh, basically, there's camping on the one side and there's camping here. This is the best spot. It's a little peninsula that comes out. Here, check this out, guys. Total minty camp spot. Love it. The guys are setting up camp now. Man. This is an adventure of a lifetime. So blessed right now. Man, what an epic campsite. However, we weren't alone. As you can see, there is a beaver here that was sharing it with us. And if you listen closely, you can actually hear him chewing on the wood. Well, after setting up camp, we decided to cook dinner, <laughs> and it's a good thing Jeremy brought along his uh, screen tent because the sand flies were starting to come out in droves, so it was nice to have a little bit of respite from the sand flies. amazing make sure you like and subscribe the next episode just when i thought we couldn't find any better campsites we find one it's at island lake see you next time
Good morning everyone. Day four of the expedition. Day five of the total trip and uh, we're packing up. Twin Lakes, absolutely stunning. Love it. Hate the mosquitoes and the sand flies. There's uh, a ton of mosquitoes here. So it's one thing we had a mosquito net. Uh, Jeremy actually pulled one out so we had we had some fun last night with the mosquito net and it all worked out pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys here we are uh, morning of day four and uh, we're gonna head south we are just south of the Richardson dunes we didn't make it all the way to the Athabasca dunes uh, because we are limited by fuel and I don't even know if you can hear me but there are crazy amounts of black sand flies <laughs> around that have just been tormenting us so we're gonna get on the road head back to Fort McMurray these three guys are going to do the jaunt with me, or I guess us, not with me. We're going to do the jaunt east or west, head up to high level from here. And uh, Derek and, and Jeremy are going to head home. So, so we're going back to work. Day four. Let's go. Awesome day, guys. Awesome day. taking our pictures and celebrating our second corner in this expedition we decided to head down the sand roads and yeah what a way to start the morning driving on the sand roads it was going to be a, a one awesome day adventure the sand roads are badass also too that campsite was totally epic loved it so we are now on our way to uh, um, Fort McMurray gonna head back there again wash up the vehicles kind of get them taken care of and uh, yeah next leg heading out west it's gonna be a blast been a blast so far. I can't wait to see what else is on on the menu. Anyways, thanks for following, guys. So, get back into Fort McMurray. Our vehicles are absolutely filthy, so we're all lined up to head into the car wash and uh, basically get our all cleaned up and and it's got sand inside and out so might take a little bit but man it was worthwhile heading out it was a blast here check it out all right all washed up ready to go 
and we're heading to Grassland. We're gonna do some uh, uploading, a couple few different things that we gotta catch up on, and then we'll be hunting for a campsite. So catch you guys later. Our journey for the day started two and a half hours north of Fort McMurray. We ended up taking a little bit of a, a break in grassland, kind of uh, do some uh, video editing that we needed to do, you know, maybe grab some food, take a little bit of a breather, and then we made our way on back roads all the way to Island Lake. And uh, definitely a, a lot of kilometers to travel in a day, but man, we had a fun time doing it. Again, traveling back roads allows us to explore areas we never normally would see. Um, allows us to find camp spots that uh, are a little bit off the beaten path and nobody really knows about them. But you know what, some of these spots are absolutely amazing. One of these beautiful campsites that we were about to explore was at a place called Island Lake. And kind of a weird name, but uh, I guess apparently there's huge islands in the middle of the lake. But you know what? The campsite, man, it was spectacular. Nobody around us. We had it all to ourselves. And because it was off the beaten path, that's probably why it wasn't used very much. All right, end of night four. Beautiful spot right on the lake. This is actually a very, very beautiful area. So pretty excited, another epic campsite. Seems like that's all we're getting on this trip. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Here's Dave setting up, hey Dave. Hey guys. And then hey. Big Blue setting up. Oh, check out Big Blue Overland, new uh, YouTube channel. Peace out guys. site set up we can concentrate on dinner I had a whole bunch of bacon I had to get rid of so we, we cooked the whole pack up and we all kind of pooled our food together oh man we ate like kings Alberta is full of diversity. It's amazing. We started the morning on the sand roads and we ended up in this completely lush lake setting. And yeah, uh, I was blown away. I'm very happy I took this trip. It really opened my eyes to what is out there in Alberta. Make sure you like and subscribe, tune in to the next video where, I'm not going to lie, the campsite really sucked. It was a total mosquito bloodbath. Anyways, see you on the next video.
about morning of day five. It's been raining like cats and dogs. And, uh, well, we're going to take this morning to take a chill pill and kind of rest a little bit. We've been pushing pretty hard. I'm going to have to resupply today as well. So as soon as we uh, kind of get up and at them, we're going to go resupply, get things ready to go. So far it's been beautiful weather all trip, so we can't complain that we've got a little bit of rain. Had to happen sometime. And uh, yeah, all in all, man, this, this trip has been amazing. Super happy. Had a great sleep last night, but boy did it rain. Holy smokes. She definitely uh, had a good downpour. It's still raining now. And uh, yeah, it makes a little bit of a muddy campsite, but so far so good. I've upgraded to my gum boots. It's getting muddy. Who would have figured that when it rains it gets muddy, right? That's just something. Oh man, look at Dave, he's totally set up. Holy smokes. Oh. That's GQ right there, man. Overlanding GQ <laughs> style. <laughs> oh, but seriously, what a sleep. What a beautiful day. I don't care that it's raining. Look at that lake view, guys. Who wouldn't want to wake up to that, huh? That's amazing. So we're gonna have some breakfast, kind of figure out what point we need to go to today. Take it easy, guys. From Island Lake we made our way all the way up to Slave Lake then we kind of headed north on 88 to see where it would take us. After heading north on 88 we decided to head to La Crete. It was by the Peace River. We could stop in La Crete and grab some uh, uh, groceries that we needed, kind of restock on ice, all that type of stuff and then we we're going to camp out by the Peace River. So that was the plan anyways. Heading north, we really did uh, see a lot of water. Um, it was everywhere, every river, every creek, every uh, water uh, surface that was out there was just overflowing and to the brim. It was uh, kind of uh, amazing to see these roads that were washed out and temporary bridges that were put up so that people can get through.
So after replenishing all of our supplies in La Crete, we uh, decided to take a back road that kind of led us towards the uh, the Peace River. We're kind of aiming to, to camp near the river for the night. Well, we uh, finally picked a campsite that wasn't full of water. There was water everywhere. Um, so we kind of figured we were going to uh, finally make camp and, you know, maybe make some dinner and have a really good night. I mean, all the nights up till now have been pretty awesome. So we were really looking forward to it. So super happy. Been a super long day of driving. I'm looking forward to eating something and crashing. It's like 10 o'clock at night. But check this out, man. The sun is still up amazing i love it anyways um the athabasca river is uh pretty beautiful it's pretty high and there was a airplane that was just actually just skimming above the water it was actually pretty cool and uh yeah looking forward to sleeping tonight it's gonna be a good camp What started out to look like a really beautiful night with an awesome campsite on the river kind of bit, took a bit of a turn. As the night kind of wore on, the mosquitoes got worse and worse and worse. And eventually they were just like thick clouds surrounding us. They didn't care about mosquito repellent. They just had their way with us. A quick fact. Did you know mosquitoes can smell human breath? They have receptors on their antennae that detect carbon dioxide released when we exhale. So throughout the night, there was more mosquitoes and more mosquitoes that kept getting into the Jeep, making it absolutely impossible to sleep. Even if I put the blankets up around my face and kind of sealed myself off, there were literally clouds of mosquitoes throughout the Jeep. So we finally figured out what was going on. So this area right here, the mosquitoes would detect my breath through here and crawl in in between the plastic and the soft top. It was basically sitting exactly the way it is right here with a little bit open like this. So didn't find that out till the morning though. And it kind of kept me up all night. I didn't sleep even a little. Ah, stupid mosquito. Needless to say, it was a super long night. Make sure you like and subscribe for the next video. We actually hit our third corner. Awesome, the 60th parallel. morning not a good sleep um, where we're camped here by the river just tons of mosquitoes and for some reason they're getting into the Jeep so I gotta figure out how and where and when and why just so I can seal it up um, my suspicion is the rear windows need to be taken off and resealed back on uh, it's a soft top so you just got to kind of clip them in and, and redo them that's where I'm suspecting they're getting into the Jeep um, so we'll probably have to do that a little bit later today I'll have to spray off the rear windows and reseal them and hopefully that will take care of the mosquitoes uh, that explains why they were so thick when we were uh, also out on the sand dunes so but Another morning, another adventure, and uh, even though I didn't sleep because of the mosquitoes, 
I'm still having fun, man. I, I wouldn't give it up for anything. So it is what it is, and uh, I think today we'll be hitting our third corner. I'm very excited about that. And then down we go. And I can't wait to drive the forestry trunk road from beginning to end. That is going to be a blast. I've always wanted to do it, and now I get to do it. So peace out. Once we got back into La Crete, we did a, a quick fuel stop, and then from there it was all the way up to high level. And after the night that we had with the mosquitoes, we figured we'd uh, stop and pick up a thermocell. Nope, everyone had uh, basically cleared the shelves. Obviously, everyone was having the mosquito issues as well. All right, leaving high level, heading up to the Northwest Territory border. So we want to show the beauty of Alberta, so we're going to go up to the border. It feels chilly enough that we might actually get some snow, which would be kind of cool. We have a timeline on this trip to get through, so uh, we got to be in three, four days. We got to be down in uh, uh, the south uh, uh, west part of the province, so that's a lot of traveling yet. Once we had uh, finished in high level, it was onward and upward to the 60th parallel. parallel guess what we're here so this is the most northern you can get uh, heading up in Alberta so Northwest Territories Alberta and of course the border is closed that's why we're not crossing the border no we might be soon we might have a trip uh, somewhere up in the Arctic area coming up but uh, as of right now there's the 60th parallel and everything is good to go um, yeah Hopefully we can do the Arctic trip soon as borders open up. What do you think? Arctic trip? Oh yeah, baby. Yeah. So we're gonna do uh we're gonna do this again in the wintertime. So we can hit up some ice roads. That would be a blast. So as of right now, borders closed, can't cross it. So in the future. We're definitely planning to head up north and trying to see if we can make it all the way to the Arctic Circle. Uh, ocean, actually, the Arctic Ocean. Tuk Tuk Tuk. Should be a, a pretty fun, adventurous trip. Anyways, we're here at the third corner of our trip so far. And this has been a blast. Super windy today, a little bit chilly. I think it's like eight degrees out right now. So she's a little bit nippy, but uh, well with the trip. The 60th parallel, what an accomplishment. We hit our, our third corner in the trip. It was awesome, felt great to be there. And you know, we actually had uh, the chance to kind of scout out a couple trails along the way and actually see some of the, the wonderful um, wildlife that there was. Check this out, this bear, he was uh, out having fun, enjoying 
his little break from the rain. Once we hit the 60th parallel, we decided to uh, head back to high level. On the way down, we stopped at a place called Indian Cabins. What a cool spot. Um, they literally had a little bit of everything in this store. Food, gas, liquor, fireworks. Well, I guess they didn't have gas. Um, the pumps were shut down when we came through. But man, what a cool store. They had a little bit of everything. And, you know, I ended up in, uh, picking up a, uh, a fillet knife for when I go out fishing. Cool spot definitely recommend stopping. It's well worth it. From Indian Cabins we made our way back to uh, high level. Then from high level we uh, headed out to the Hayzama Wildlife Preserve. Hayzama Lakes Wildlife Park has a wetlands that covers over 486 kilometers. It has a ton of animal life in the park, from wood buffalo to moose to bear to uh, uh, ducks and geese. Man, there's just about everything there, and a lot of it. I have to thank Dave from Blind Man Overland for getting some of this footage. Um, I ended up having to pull over at the entrance uh, to the Hayzama Road in order to catch up on a little bit of sleep. Not having any sleep the night before and traveling uh, quite a few hundreds of kilometers, yeah, I had to take a little bit of a nap and uh, kind of catch up. So thank you Dave. Well, once I was done my little nap, we decided to head back to high level where Dave from Lost Trail Overland Outfitters had invited us over for a wonderful steak dinner and, you know what, a shower, which was desperately needed. You know, I have to say, it is awesome to meet other people in the overlanding community and it seems like we're all kind of like-minded and I'm really looking forward to having some adventures with Dave and his family with uh, Lost Trail Overland Outfitters and uh, getting out there doing some camping and, and seeing some awesome sights. Oh yeah, I slept like a baby that night. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification. In the next episode, we hit kilometer zero of the forestry trunk road. Dave and his wife from Lost Trail um, Overland Outfitters, totally hospitable, it was awesome. Uh, nice break after almost a week of having a shower. Wow, did it feel good. Um, made us steaks for dinner. Man, couldn't ask for a better host. And uh, we all sat by the fire, all kind of social distanced out. It was a really good time um, and a really good break. But anyways, he gave me one of his patches. Patches front and center. All right, the fun part of the trip is coming. Forestry trunk road. We'll be on it to, by tonight. 
Um, we're going to probably be doing a solid eight hour jaunt all the way down there. Going to get a lot of miles behind us. Uh, territory's border went well. And we saw some bears, but uh, it's closed, so we couldn't pass it. We're traveling the four corners of Alberta, basically to look at all the beauty Alberta has. So we weren't going to even attempt to go across, and that wasn't the plan. But uh, you know what, when the borders open up, there are a lot of trips that are going to happen. We want to go to Tuktiuktuk, and we have to go through that particular crossing to go to Tuktiuktuk up on the Dempster Highway. So yeah, eventually we'll be going through that border. Hopefully all this COVID thing goes away soon. But uh, yeah, time to make some miles. Catch you later. After leaving high level, we decided to make our way all the way to Grimshaw, Alberta. Once we were in uh, Grimshaw, we decided to go to the uh, uh, the mile zero marker for the Mackenzie Highway. We had basically traveled from the Mackenzie Highway all the way from the Northwest Territories all the way, all the way in. This was the official mile zero location. From Grimshaw, we then made our way down to Grand Prairie. And uh, check out this old suspension bridge. I didn't even think there was uh, a suspension bridge like this in Alberta. It was a really cool sight. Just outside Grand Prairie, there's an awesome place called Trapper Gourds. Man, has everything you want for outdoor survival. And I uh, managed to pick up uh, uh, actually a hat that was really cool so I can switch my patches around. And I'm definitely going back to buy more stuff. And they're just outside kilometer zero mile marker. All right, now for the best part of the whole trip, starting at FTR kilometer zero. All right, we made it. This is gonna be awesome, guys. I'm super stoked. Finally on the forestry trunk road. We're gonna do it from kilometer zero all the way in. It's gonna be a blast. It's been a great trip so far. And I'm looking forward to a few more camping spots. We're starting on the home run, which is awesome. So excited, guys. dusty if you don't do that people don't know what to expect you when you're coming down the road so all three of us have VHF radios and uh, are calling in but uh, yeah for those that haven't been on the FTR it's it's definitely a requirement it's a big safety thing so 
yeah, having fun. Uh, I believe we're stopping at about a, a kilometer, 100, 111, right in there. Um, we got a, apparently a pretty nice campsite that we're gonna go to. Sounds like that exhaust is loose again. Yeah. Whoop. All right, we're losing Rick. Oh, right. oh. Rick, we're gonna miss you, buddy. <laughs> big hug, oh, big hug. hug. Sasquatch, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Too many valleys touching. <laughs> what an epic trick, trip so far. Seriously, guys, this has been awesome. We've yeah. seen so much awesome yeah. views like so, and things so here, i've never seen before in my so here's life the thing. we have in the, on this trip we have driven on cement or concrete asphalt yep. gravel sand and mud yep absolutely all five yep. that's awesome we're sad to see you go rick yeah. rick's gonna finish the four corners yep. on his own and uh just because he's got some family obligations he's got to take care of yep. but the uh, southwest corner with the wife there you go <laughs> Man, it's been a blast. Oh, yeah. What an epic <laughs> it's trip, It's been guys. a rad time. Seriously. Yeah. Every campsite. Yeah. And indeed, another epic campsite with beautiful mountain views. One of the coolest features of this campsite was a really, really awesomely placed picnic table right on the lookout. And somebody even went to, through the effort to uh, make a chair so you can sit and watch the beautiful panorama of mountains that surrounded you. It was a really cool uh, outlook and a lot of thought went into it. It was definitely somewhere I wanted to spend some more time. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification. The next episode, we see more mountains. We bump into Philippe Lighty, who is on his epic journey from Anchorage, Alaska to Calgary. And Joe joins us to help us finish the trip.
right, another day and on the road again. We're going to be uh, hitting pretty much most of uh, Forestry Trunk Road today, going all the way down to a place called Spray Lakes. So, going to be very beautiful. Um, I just can't believe how, uh, how beautiful Alberta is and it's so diverse, mountains and plains and everything. And it's pretty cool. Uh, should be a good trip today. I'm looking forward to seeing what Spray Lakes is all about. Apparently they shot the movie The Revenant down there. Uh, so if you watch that movie, you've probably seen those mountains before. So that's where we'll be tonight. And uh, it should be a really good trip. I think our next stop is going to be Grand Cache. And uh, once we hit Grand Cache, it's uh, on the way to Spray Lakes. And uh, you got to go through Canmore, I believe it is, to get through there. This is why you want to travel the forestry trunk road. Look at those mountains. That is absolutely beautiful. You just sit here for hours and take a look at it. Wow. And there's more to come. There's lots more to come. There's some pretty cool, uh, cool views down the road. But you got to stop in and take the beauty when you can. How many times are you in front of something so majestic such as these? From kilometer 121, we then headed south on the forestry trunk road, where we finally came down to the junction of Highway 16 and the trunk road. We crossed the road right around Hinton area and then continued south all the way down to Nordegg and uh, what a beautiful, beautiful stretch of road. This is the great thing about wilderness backcountry. Rivers everywhere and not just mundane rivers. Every single one of them is just absolutely beautiful. Man, this is awesome. I could probably use up four terabytes of footage just from rivers. They're just, they're amazing. Anyways, check it out, guys.
from Nordic we just we made our way down the forestry trunk road and uh, started to uh, get towards a, a, a place close to Ramp Falls and we came across this uh, this cowboy on the side of the road which was kind of cool turned out that cowboy was Philippe Massetti he had an incredible story. Uh, he was actually traveling from Alaska all the way to Calgary. His adventure was called Journey America. Felipe. Felipe! What's that? You're doing something that is just the coolest thing I've ever heard of. I have to agree with that. Straight up, man. Let me get, let me get this on camera because this is too cool. Look at this, guys. This might have been the coolest. These guys are doing something way cooler than we are. No way. Yeah, yeah. yeah you guys yeah. Out too. Uh, so we're actually just on the tail end finishing loop of the Four Corners expedition for Alberta. Nice. So we've driven to the farthest you can drive it to each Four Corners. Wow, that's amazing. On Good the job. province. And we're wow. currently heading southbound right now. And where does it end? Uh, Waterton. Waterton National Park, yeah. Nice. Good job. Yeah, man. it's going to be amazing. slick. It's all going to be over. I think it's going to be about 6,000 kilometers by the time we're yeah, done. Yeah, both there, yeah. Wow. yeah. With these two vehicles. Yeah, with yeah. just these two. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. Yeah, man. it's super cool, man. I love the Jeeps. Truck's awesome, too. Yeah. Congrats. Thanks, man. Yeah. You too. Thank you so much. This is really cool. Yeah. Thank Tell us a little you. bit about what's going on here. Yeah, let me just get off smoke Oh here. yeah, you bet. Thank you so much. <laughs> so uh, I started in 2012 from the Calgary Stampede. Yeah. Uh, rode uh, 16,000 kilometers home to Brazil. Took me uh, two years and three months. Wow. And uh, when I got there, I went to visit a children's cancer hospital. And I uh, was just like, God damn it, now I need to help. Yeah. So I'm not rich. So I was like, you know, why don't I raise money for them? Yeah. And uh, go on a second ride. So I headed down to Ushuaia, southern tip of Argentina. That took uh, a year and three months, 7,500 kilometers. Wow. Through uh, three countries. And uh, once I was uh, close to the end, I was like, well, now all I have left is the north, right? So I got to do Alaska to Calgary. <laughs> and, uh, Savage. So I started um, last year from Fairbanks. Yeah. And we're headed back to Calgary once we get there will be eight years in the road uh, 12 nations more than 25,000 kilometers ridden right thanks to the help of uh, strangers every day a lot of people help us yeah say we've experienced yeah. the same thing you know we're, we're, we've only been on the road for two weeks but a boy you know if, when you do things that other people wish that they would do yeah they kind of want to live vicariously through you yes, right sir. so anything yes, that they can do to help they'll, they'll they'll usually do yeah it's amazing it's amazing people you just like I always tell people I feel like 99.9% .9 of people are good right and if you sit at home and watch the news they say you're gonna you, think that it's the other way around yeah, they sell you the opposite right so yeah. yeah you guys know what it's like when you're on the road and, you help and yeah and people are just wanting to help and the universe conspires in your favor the hardest part is you guys i'm sure know is taking the first step yeah you know that's the thing that's what it's just going. doing it right it's yeah. getting to the point of just getting outside it's and just doing the it. fear right it's yeah. like uh, jumping off a cliff into a lake if you stand on the edge and look down you're screwed right yeah or you look the higher <laughs> that's it gets. Right. yeah and uh, when you're living a dream it's the same way you got to just eventually you just got to jump you know that is awesome what well, are your horses names uh this is uh smoky and that's Mac. There's two wild horses from the Okanagan. There at that. Oh, wild wow, horses cool. from BC. Yes, sir. Wild that's what we like. BC. Yes, sir. They probably have cousins further up north. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. <laughs> Got family everywhere. So you guys just have the uh, RV as the, the support? Yeah, so this was for this trip. Uh, the first journey was just horse and pack horse. And uh, and Marie and Rocky Aiken lent uh, this beautiful motorhome so we can carry water, hay, feed for the horses. And we have somewhere to sleep at night. And I met Clara on my second journey to Patagonia, to Argentina. Nice. She lives in a small town, a town called El Bolson and roped her and, <laughs> and brought her out. And yeah, it's been amazing to share this journey with her. And yeah, thanks to this photo these people from um, Clarice from Alberta, Marie yeah. and Rocky Aiken, like again, the generosity of the people is, is tremendous. Wow, that's awesome. That's super cool. Well, I really want to wish you best of luck on the rest, Thank on the ending so of your journey. Much. Yes, sir. Yeah. You guys as well. Probably Absolutely. A little, better, a little bittersweet. Yeah, it is. It is. But uh, definitely excited. It's been a long eight years. Yeah. So sad to be, uh, you know, retiring from, from life as a saddle tramp, but uh, <laughs> so the time has come. That. Time has come. It's, so what uh, is, what's your plan after this then? Uh, a lot 
lot of work. Um, there, my first book, Long Ride Home, available on Amazon. There you go. Is uh, being turned into a major motion picture. So we're going to cool. be working on that. I filmed everything uh, like you guys. Yeah. So we're going to be putting together a documentary. That's fantastic. Uh, writing my third book, releasing the second once I get to uh, Calgary. Yeah, a lot of work. That's, That's awesome. insane. Man, yes, I, honestly, I wish you the best. No, thank it's you so been much. It's an absolute pleasure. Pleasure meeting thank you, Thank you boys. so much. Pleasure yeah, meeting you, sir. Pleasure, sir. Yeah, thank absolute you. Absolute pleasure yeah. meeting you. It was a pleasure. Of course, though. Thank you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, Safe travels, guys. Man, that's so much. that's Good wicked. Job for you too. Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll be looking out for you. Guys, you awesome. I'm assuming you're you're blogging and posting yeah, your trip. Wildtv.com. Wildtv.com. All oh, right. Okay. Here, I'll get it on here. Yeah, that's good. You guys. Yeah, absolutely. Oh man, I can't this. get over it. It's so cool. <laughs> Where can we watch this? Uh, you can get this. Man, was it ever super cool to meet Felipe? Really liked his point. You know, you got that uh, that dream that you want to do. You just do it. Because if you stand on the edge too long. It just seems more impossible. Man, this whole trip was awesome and uh, it was it was amazing to see Felipe doing a trip that you know totally eclipsed what we were doing. You know, eight years on the road. Wow, that was pretty cool. Anyways, as we were close to Ram Falls, of course, what are we gonna see a lot of? Uh, well, Rams. Lost Rick yesterday, but we gained Joe today. G'day. Hey, Joe. Uh, he joined us about 100 kilometers back on the road. Uh, he's got a snazzy Tacoma all done up and decided he wanted to come and finish the uh, the rest of the tour with us. So thanks, all Joe. Way. Not a problem. That's awesome. Love it. And uh, yeah, we got to make miles. Uh, we got to get this done by tomorrow. So see you later. Once we're on the road again, we uh, made our way all the way south past Wypress and uh, back down into Kananaskis country and then further south close to the Spray Lakes where we ended up camping for the night. Right, off the forestry trunk road however we have some uh, issues with Dave's transmission the overdrive linkage is uh, not happy. It's the only problem we've had so far though. Yeah it is the only problem we've had so far so uh, I think I blew one shock, but that's easily repairable and it's not a mission critical thing. Um, yeah, so basically we're going to see if we can get this uh, thing running and uh, finish this trip because we've okay. come way too far to not make it. So we'll keep you... We'll you, get it fixed. Yeah, we'll get it fixed. It's, it's fixed. It's zip tie fixed right now. Zip tie fixed. There you go. You got it from the professional. Dave. How many kilometers have we done on gravel? Uh, today? Today. We've done about a thousand kilometers on gravel today. Yeah. So if if all that happened is we lost a, a crappy generic electrical plug-in and it has to be zip tied in, then, then we're winning. We are winning. We're winning. We are winning. I, I still feel like I'm vibrating though. A thousand kilometers yeah. on gravel. Yeah, you'll fall asleep on the road. Hey, hey, yeah, we might, we might yeah. have a nap. I think so. <laughs> Okay, we're off to Tim's to recharge, kind of see where we where we want to go from here, and make sure that this transmission is in working order so we can finish this adventure, guys. We'll push the truck if we have to. We'll just push it, man. We are going to do this. We're finishing this goddamn expedition. <laughs> uh, see you later, guys. We made our way down close to Spray Lakes for the campsite. It was getting dark, so. Rather than actually looking for some crown land, we, we paid for a campsite. I know it's sacrilegious, but we did. And you know what? I slept pretty good that night. It was a good, good time to get off the road. It was dark, but you know, 
make sure you like and subscribe. The next episode, we actually get to the farthest southwest corner of Alberta. We complete our trip. And man, you know, it felt pretty good. So make sure you tune in for the next episode. We settled in for some late night camping pretty close to Spray Lake. It was dark and man, you know what? We needed to get off the road. All right, had to stay in a campsite. Arrived super late last night. Um, managed to find a campsite near the Spray Lakes area uh, or Spray Lake, I think it was called. And uh, yeah, we got in, it was dark. So managed to get our sleep going. Now we're on our way to Waterton, final day of the push to the Four Corners, and uh, pretty excited this is going to happen. Um, man, what a journey along the way. So we've got uh, me and my Jeep, we've got uh, Joe and his Tacoma, hey Joe. Hey. And of course we got Dave with the Nissan. And it's running good today. Uh, the zip tie fix worked, so yeah. That's good. Uh, I had to do a zip tie fix on my exhaust as well. Uh, exhaust kept popping out of the uh, donut, the little rubber donut to hold it in place. Um, and that was on a thousand miles of gravel. So if that's the only issue I had, that's pretty decent. So uh, zip tie fix, pushed it back on the donut. Exhaust isn't rattling anymore. That was a little irritating because it's sitting there bouncing on my rear track bar. <laughs> uh, anyways. Waterton, here we come. So after driving through some insanely majestic mountains, uh, Highway 40 or the Forestry Trunk Road veers south through the Livingstone Public Land Use Zone. The uh, Livingstone Public Land Use Zone has multiple camping areas. Man, I wished I could have stopped and, and checked a few of them out, but we had a timeline we had to hit. So basically, once we uh, made our way through the land use zone, we came to the town of Coleman in the uh, the Crow's Nest Pass. Once at Coleman, we had to uh, head east in order to make our way back down to Waterton, but we couldn't afford to not stop at Frank's Slide. Man, how impressive that was. Frank's Slide, the whole mountain came down, basically covering this whole area. And across the road over there used to be a town. This happened in the 30s and basically killed a whole bunch of people. Um, the natives used to call this mountain, I believe it was the moving mountain because they could tell that something was not right about it. And uh, yeah, just incredible to see it up close and personal. This whole mountainside just came down. Man, it must have been must have been horrifying. And it happened at night too. So like man. But if you look at it, man, the size of the boulders across on the other side over here, there's just huge boulders. Just um, you know, wow. And that must have been a very terrifying night for a lot of people. There were survivors out of that whole thing. 
but the good majority of the actual village itself was uh, killed which is sorry to say and they're still underneath there so there's no way you can get to them anyways Frank slide piece of Alberta's history absolutely absolutely incredible that it actually happened Well, from Frank Slide, we made our way down to Pincher Creek. Then from Pincher Creek, we took the number six highway all the way down past Twin Butte and started to make ourselves a little bit closer to the Waterton National Park. As we got closer, the mountains started looming in the background. Man, what a beautiful sight it was. Guess where we are guys? Waterton. Fourth corner achieved. That is so awesome. Happy to be here. Man is it beautiful. I didn't realize how beautiful it was. How beautiful is it here Dave? Uh, you know what? It's prettier than my first girlfriend. That's pretty pretty. Is it pretty pretty? I'm gonna take your word for it Dave. Yeah. Anyways, we're here. Four corners. Awesome. Uh, it's been a blast sand roads to dirt roads to grass roads to gravel roads to all. yeah it, did it, all. it was awesome we tried to do the whole thing on back roads now obviously some areas we couldn't do back roads yeah, but we had to connect we had to connect those roads with some roads and yeah the roads we chose to connect those with were highways and that saved us there's roads that were not even on the map that we took yeah uh summer roads only where'd they go i don't know we found out that was pretty cool uh so this is amazing. There's a nice big thunderstorm rolling in. Just across there is the United States of America. There you go, US of A right over there, guys. So, trip successful. Man, what a blast. So many experiences, and I hope you guys enjoy them all as well. Waterton, we had achieved our goal. We had gone as far as we could go at the time to the four corners of Alberta. Man, it felt awesome. Amazing to do this trip and see the beauty that was here in Alberta. I didn't really know how beautiful Waterton really was. It was a stunning, stunning town with beautiful vistas and mountains surrounding it. But we decided to go camping up near the uh, Ghost River area. So we pushed through a storm and made our way up. So, came down to Transalta Ghost River. Um, we were gonna try and set up on the Transalta. There's some cliffs that overlook the river, but everything was taken. Father's Day weekend, so not gonna happen. So we set up here, right on the river. What a beautiful campsite. Um, we've got Joe over here. Hey, hey Joe. Hello. Got uh, basically uh, Dave set up with his rooftop tent. And of course my Jeep, it's set up, ready to go. And uh, let Frankie know and everybody else know that we're here and couldn't ask for a better spot. Gonna be some beautiful views. Gonna chill out now that we've done the, or, um, the Four Corners Expedition, finally finished it. I'm gonna take a day. I'm gonna sit here and relax. I'm gonna get up in the morning and watch that sun come up over the mountains and I am going to enjoy myself because that was a lot of kilometers that we put on but every bit of it was fun uh, we had a total adventure and yeah 
but for right now I'm gonna set up camp and I'm gonna enjoy this spot peace out the universe had one more surprise for us for the day we uh, had the privilege of meeting Richard Giordano and Ashley Giordano from the X Overland team and if you guys are watching thanks a lot for the patches really appreciate it and I hope your guys's hike was epic What an absolutely amazing campsite with visually stunning, beautiful views. Joe with his Tacoma who decided to finish the trip with us. Dave with his Nissan and the rooftop tent set up. And even Dale came down with his new Ram Rebel to come camp with us for the night. It was pretty cool. Man, I love the mountains out here in the Ghost River and it was epic. It was the perfect way to end the trip. And you know what? This trip was all about pushing yourself to the limit, getting out there, doing things you normally wouldn't do. And Felipe, who we met the day before, man, he said you just can't stand on the edge. You gotta jump, you gotta do something. Make it happen, because the longer you stand on the edge, the more of a insurmountable task it seems to be. So yeah, follow your dreams. 